The power of gratitude to achieve happiness and everything that you want in life. That is a topic we're going to talk about today. I'm Kiana Daniel. Thank you so much for joining the Investiva movement. My guest today is the one and only Carla White. She launched her first app, the Gratitude Journal app, back in 2008. She's been featured on Oprah Winfrey, on Forbes, on USA Today, among so many others. And today we talk about the power of your mindset and how you have everything you need to change your life and to achieve true happiness. We talk about what money really is. We talk about why abundance is a better word to use than greed. And this interview, you guys, is just full of life-changing, positive stuff. So please make sure to watch it till the very end or to listen to it and give it a thumbs up. Share it with all your friends and family because this stuff is life changing. Let's go say hi to Carla. Likewise. Oh my gosh. Finally. Congratulations on your new channel. That's huge. Thank you. And guess what? I mean, all right, Carla, I know that this was sudden. So I just want to tell you this app, this gratitude app is the best app. Hold on. Hold on. Let me bring it up. (laughs) This one. It's like, I've been addicted to it. Literally. I downloaded this when was it two weeks ago and i've just been like oh this is like this is what i needed i mean okay yeah because i've had um a couple of people reach out to me saying that they they're part of your tribe really yeah yeah saying i got your gratitude app and yeah because i told them because like i downloaded it so this is what happened right the past few months so i'm the biggest the secret fan, all right? And completely changed my life. It was 10 years ago that I got into, when it first came out, and I was like, I got introduced to the law of attraction, all these things. So when I was in Japan, I actually started doing this whole thing of like writing my future diary, writing about gratitude, be living in the happy moments so that you attract it. And then, so it's very hard because sometimes you, life happens and you fall back into things that are negative. So what happened is what, what I decided to do is like, I made it a habit of watching the secret every six months. And then of course the past two years, you just forget, like I got pregnant and then when you're pregnant, your hormones and you forget things. So I forgot to do it. Right. <laughs> and the past few months, it's just been one after another, after another. I'm like, Oh my God, why is this? I used to be so happy. Why am I constantly tired, constantly things happening, Facebook ads gets disabled, this gets disabled, that, people scam, people pretend to be me and scam people. Like all these things are happening one after another. Like, oh my God. So I was like, ah, so I was telling my husband, we should watch the secret. I knew I had to watch the secret, but we just wasn't, weren't making the uh, room for it. Mm -hmm. So two weeks ago, I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch it. Whether I told my husband, whether you're watching it or not, I'm going to watch it. So I sat down to watch it. The next morning, I literally came across your app. <laughs> and I'm like, so I already was in this mood. I'm like, oh, this is, oh, this is it. This is the magic of the secret. I so love it. Something completely fun. Something this like came across. And in the past two weeks, I've just been, it's been amazing. Like I wake up every morning, I'm happy. It's just like, it's not cliche. Like, and I told my people, yeah, like the next morning I already was feeling better. Even So that's the thing. Even if you don't see the, um, the results immediately, like, oh, your life isn't immediately better or like something, mm-hmm. but you feel better. Yeah. Like, I woke up excited. I woke up happy. So I told my people, like, you guys, you got to go and download this app. This is the best $2 you're ever going to spend in your <laughs> life. <laughs> So yeah, so I cannot be more grateful for your gratitude app and welcome Carla. I know this was a very long (laughs) introduction to everything you do. I just took the stage away from you because I'm just super excited about, and you guys who are watching at home, this is not a paid informational anything. This is like literally me being a super fan (laughs) of Carla White. (laughs) Well, it goes both ways, honey. (laughs) 
<laughs> so welcome, Carla. Tell us. All right. So I want to, people are dying. They want to know about your story because I know your story is just super fascinating. So I don't know how far back you want to go, right, right. But, but just tell us where this whole thing got started. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting that you say that because when I created this app, I was like, oh, I hope one person changes their, like one person shifts out of everything's happening to me. So that I'm glad you shared that because that's exactly uh, why I'm I created I'm pretty sure there are millions of people who have been. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> been really them. rewarding like that, but that's what happened. So, um, but I was, I did not, I wasn't, aware of this for many, many years, most of my adult life. So I was uh, going along pretty well with life. I was making a lot of money. I was working for a big tech company over in London and um, the dot-com bubble kind of bursted. So they were like, do you want to go back to Seattle? It was Microsoft. Do you want to go back to Seattle or do you want to be let go? And I'm like, I'll be let go because I don't want to move from London. I want to, I just met my uh, husband. He was my boyfriend then. And we were talking about starting a company together. And so we did that. We, I like, let's do this. And it was an, a Wi-Fi network throughout London. And um, Wait, but you're not originally from London. No, I'm originally from America. So uh, That's yeah, the yeah, I can get into all of that, how I ended up in London too. That was all a pretty crazy story. But um, but when we were creating this company, I still had the lifestyle of a corporate person with that big three, four, ten billion dollar net under me that uh, wasn't no longer there. So my money was running out really quickly, and I was right. stressed. You know, also it all because it starts out as an emotion of stress, and then manifests in your health, and um, and I wasn't coping with it really at all. So my way of coping was avoidance, and I, I was a master of avoidance. I oh, could, wow. Yeah, I could binge watch TV. Britain has some of the best sitcoms. I could sit and binge watch TV. Drinking is really acceptable over there. So like going down to the pub and getting drunk, um, all these really toxic behaviors. I, and then I was getting migraines for the first time in my life, and these oh. ulcers, and um, and my body was just breaking down on me. And then it was, I think about November timeframe in 2015 or 2005, gosh, not 2015, 2005. And my mom sent me an email saying that a family friend had passed away, which was not like earth shattering because he, he'd been poor, but my gut just said, you need to go home for Christmas. Now I was planning to go home in February because my brother and his wife were expecting a baby, but I went home for Christmas and I noticed that my dad wasn't well, but because I was only home for a little bit, I didn't want to rock the boat. You know, I was a queen yeah. of avoidance and I didn't want to have anybody go, oh, you know, you're overreacting. Why do you have to come home and be like that? So I, I kept my mouth shut as much as it bothered me. And I barely had my bags unpacked when I got that middle of the night phone call from my brother saying that dad had passed away. Oh and God. yeah, I just crumbled to the ground. I blame myself. I didn't tell anybody about the blame and I um, just got worse and worse, my depression. So you talk about like how things just slowly, I, I kind of liken it to, you know, Christmas. You see one little ornament in the store and then it's all of a sudden a whole bunch and then like everything is Christmas and depression happens the same way. It's like yeah. one little thing starts to happen wrong and then it's a bunch of things and then it's like you can't get anything right. It's just everything's happening wrong in your life and that was happening to me to the point where I just wanted it to end. Like I was driving down the motorway in uh, England, the M4, as fast as I could hoping that car would just spin over and it would be done. Oh my gosh. Yeah, right? That's how, that's how bad I felt. And my husband, not knowing what to do, he's like, well, let's get you closer to the family. So we moved from London. Like London, I worked so hard to get there. He didn't know. Like I, I, ended, I was living out of my car for part of my life. I like had I, the things I did to, I, and going back home felt like the biggest uh, failure of my life. And so, but I didn't trust my own judgment. 
because wasn't it my decision to keep my mouth shut that caused my dad's untimely death? So who am I to even trust my own judgment? So I go home, I get worse because it's winter. I don't have any winter gear. I mean, it's just crazy. I, you know, driving everywhere. So I'm putting on all this weight. I'm drinking even more oh unhealthy. And at its worst, I end up in the hospital, double pneumonia. And the doctor says, here's something for your pneumonia and here's something for your depression. And nobody ever labeled it as depression before. Like I hit it so well. And I went home and did what everybody does when they have like that big wake up call. I got on Google. And like, oh what do my I do? God. <laughs> and I did. I was like, what? So what can I do about this? And um, came across just writing things down that were positive. So I came across an article about people who lost their home, their loved ones, um, limbs, you know, and the way they turned their life around was focusing on the good. And then the secret also came out about then it was going viral. And I watched that and I'm like, oh my gosh, just write stuff down every day. And I was about two months into writing every single day where I was out on a walk and I'm like, well, what can I write tonight? Because like when you sit down, you want to know what to write. And I was thinking, well, I got a job offer from NASA. I'm sleeping really well. I'm you know, my relationships improved. And um, that's when, <laughs> do you have to take those? <laughs> what? Do you have to take those or is no, that No, no, no. These are Facebook notifications. I'm trying to figure out a way. How do you turn those so don't, don't make sounds? My I don't know. Are... I always just have to close Facebook. It is closed. I'm not even on it. Well, we have to edit this out, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm going to try. I'm so sorry. Um, I know. Well, I didn't know if it was you or me because no, I, I noticed my Facebook was just, open no, too. It's closed, but it, it just makes sounds. So if you could just ignore these sounds. I will. I will. I will. No, but tell us. Okay. We were like, we were at the peak of the story. All right. Yeah, what happened so, that okay. night? <laughs> I know. All right. Cut in. All right. So, um, yeah, so I was out for a walk and I was writing, coming up with all these things I was going to write in my journal when I realized like only in two months, my life had done a complete 180. Like I was making more money, my relationships. Improved, and wait, hold on, hold on. Improved. You got a job offer from NASA? Yeah, I got a job offer from okay, NASA. Wh doing what? Where? What is it? Okay. Can you please hold us? What is your background background? <laughs> what did you study? <laughs> How do you do that? I know, right? So, um the the job offer from nasa I, it's all crazy how it happens it's so my background do you have an engineering background technology i have a mba and an mis so. okay so i mean so i i'm an my background is electrical engineering right so my goal like my dream growing up was to work at nasa and then i found out that because i'm from iran i can't <laughs> Yeah. I mean, now I probably can because I'm an American citizen, but at the time, like after, right after college, it was not a thing, but okay. It was just, ah, so we have that connection too. Okay. Yeah. I worked at the Pentagon as well. The, okay. Yes. Oh my God. I, I heard that. Yeah. The, yeah. the episode so, I had on, on, on your podcast, I haven't listened to it all through, but I'm just dying to finish it off because it's just such an Anyways, okay, you, you go ahead with your story. I don't yeah, want to. <laughs> so, yeah, I got a job offer from NASA. And, um, and so anyway, I'm out on this walk going like I did all, all these things are happening. What's the magic pill? How did I change my life around? And it took me a while for the penny to drop and me to realize that it was because of the journal. I mean, I, I'm sure it started changing my life a lot quicker than that, but it took a while because I just didn't believe that your thoughts or your emotions had so much power over your well-being. It's just unbelievable. And when I tell people this, a lot of people have now come down to understand, but like right now, my life 10 years after I first started is just literally what I had written down in my future diary. Like the guy that I married, the person, the place that I live, like the view, the, it's just, it's crazy how your mind really does have that power. And it mm -hmm. also has that power to turn your life upside down because it's just such yeah. a powerful tool. You can literally, you are the author of your life. These are like not 
cliches. This happens to me over no. and over and over again. There's scientific evidence. It's not a bunch of woo woo. Uh, and people are like, the, or they'll say, well, I can't get the law of attraction to work for me. And you, you always have it working. <laughs> Yeah. If, to what direction right do you now. want to have it working? <laughs> You're saying it's not working, it's working. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. <laughs> You're reaffirming which direction yep. you want it to go. Yeah, exactly. And so since launching the app, so what I did like in on that walk, I thought I've got to tell the world about this because it's so simple. Like it, this started out with you saying, oh my gosh, it's so simple. And yet it's so profoundly impactful. And why isn't everybody doing this? That's, that's been my biggest riddle ever since like this journey began and my biggest mission. Like I, definitely, I hope I at least get a good percentage of the population constantly practicing abundance or gratitude or some sort of what I call power ritual in that direction because we are being brainwashed or whatever you want to call it into believing that there's lack, that there's not enough. Um, in fact, like if you just want to take money, since that you're, that's your thing, if you look at all the money in the world, only like 4% of it is in physical form. Yeah. Like Euro or dollars. No, or there's pesos. no cash. Everything is digital. Everything is like. Yeah. <laughs> There's, and there's so much of it. There is so you much can literally of it. write and you, like the Fed literally can print out, not, they don't even print. They can just like add a zero and there is more money. <laughs> right? Right. They just yeah. have to punch a button. That's yeah. right. I yeah. know. So, um, and it's our, our belief that we have to work so hard to get it yeah. and that, you know, if we're taking from one person, it's their lack we're taking from them not, and they're not going to receive something. I mean, like if I had that thought, if somebody was going to give me two bucks for an app and they aren't getting like, they're, they're going to be out of $2 forever. That's not how it works. And for that $2, they get an app. Plus they're probably going to get 2000, 3000, 4000 in their bank account because of the compound interest and what they're going to receive from the value I give them. And well, I mean, I actually, so it's very interesting that I'm in the field of money and finance, but I come from a background that talking about money was not okay. My, like mm. I come from a scientific family. My dad is an engineer. I'm an engineer and yeah. I'm, my husband is an engineer. Right. And it's like always like science versus wealth. You can, you cannot have both. You either go the science mm. route, which is the most pre more prestigious route or you go the greedy route, route. like that's what yeah. it was labeled. The money route is a greedy route, whereas science is a prestigious, you're helping the world route. So we're yeah. like, okay, which one is better, science or, uh, or wealth? It's like actually a saying in Persian, right? It's like science, science. So you got to go the science route. And mm -hmm. so I never, and when I was in Japan, I was talking about this to my professors. It was the first time I ever came across the power of investing. It was 2008 when the markets crashed. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I actually made money when the markets crashed by luck, but it was profound. So I talked about it to my professors like, no, 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 no. You don't want to go that route. We are scientists. Our brains are for science. Those are greedy banks. And I'm like, uh. so it's been, so I've been working very hard and I still sometimes fall back onto that belief that, oh, maybe I shouldn't charge people this much. Oh, mm -hmm. well, I feel bad. I charge person that, that person this much, like whatever it is for my services. And then I have to remind myself, I actually literally have an alarm goes on my phone every single day at 3 p.m. to remind me that I'm actually serving people by, by charging mm -hmm. them because I forget. And I fall back because these are the habits that were that formed when I was very little and I practiced them growing up. It's very hard to fall out of it. And the best way to fall out of it is to practice looking at the positive of it. So yeah. in my journal, when I use your app, I also was like, if I, if somebody buys my, let's say product, my power course, I celebrate it by saying I was able to serve somebody yeah. uh, by welcoming them into my community, into my movement. So I, I shift mm -hmm. even the vocabulary that I use when I, um, when I use your app and I feel like it, it really does empower me. 
Absolutely. You know, and what you, what your mindset is about science versus money. I watched Dora the Explorer, a recent movie that just came out like last year and how it is Hollywood blockbuster. And in the movie, it was, we are the explorers. They are the bad people who are going after the treasure. We don't want money. We're explorers. They want money. They're bad people. And wow. it's reiterated all through childhood in all the media in Hollywood. And, you know, you look at all the bad people were the ones who robbed the bank. The good ones are the ones who got the money, put it back in the bank. We don't want money. And the truth yeah, of I it mean, is. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And for us to have a voice. And if you're watching this, you can relate to what us is. It's not the people who are normally on the golf courses, in the boardrooms, um, in the, the Oval Offices, making the decisions that are impacting the whole world. Like once you start to balance out that wealth, then you balance out the decision making. You balance out what's getting researched. You know, like right now, the, the um, ideas that are getting the most research are getting backed by the people with the most money. Having money isn't a bad thing. It's it, it's a, a few, tool to give yeah. you more more choices, more opportunities mm -hmm. to change your world and other people's worlds. Right. So it's yeah. very funny because I was talking to my mom. My parents are right now in Iran, um, and right as of today, as of yesterday, uh, they tripled the price of oil. Okay. So people are literally in so much pain and they, they, there's so much poverty. And my mom is like, so my parents are American citizens, but they live in Iran. It's just old habits don't die. And mm -hmm. um, so my mom's like, I feel so bad for these people. They have no money. What am I going to do? So I was telling them, I'm going to make enough money to help a lot of people. My mom was like, what? Like you're going to make money to help how many people? I'm like, that's not the thing. Like if I have the money, then I might be able to change the legislations to change that government. Because right now I'm sitting here, I'm sending mm -hmm. my thoughts and prayers, <laughs> which is not going to change anything. Whereas even if I have a fraction, even if I help one person in Iran, two people, five people, that's a change. That's a right? change. I don't, uh, and I can't do it if I don't have the money. Because you, just, you yeah. impact those, that one person, they impact another Five people. It's a movement. It creates a mm -hmm. wave. Exactly. Yeah. And it's really interesting why, you know, like how, so if you, I want to take this a few different directions. So um, right after the, the industrial revolution, the second industrial revolution. So there was the first one and then there was a world war. So all the, the goods that were produced during the industrial revolution went towards the war efforts. And then there was a second one after the World War I, and nobody in America was buying these goods because our great-great-grandparents made their own soap. They bought a suit. They wore it for their entire lifetime. They baked their own bread. They sewed their own clothes. You know, they, they weren't buying these goods because they're producers, not consumers. And the government wasn't sure what to do. So they went and talked to marketers. They hired marketers that redefined what it meant to be American. American is having the three-car garage, the white picket fence, the Cadillac. Uh, happiness is in the bottom of a Coke bottle. It's buying stuff. It's consuming. In fact, when the Twin Towers fell, the first thing that one of the first things George Bush said was go out and buy. And we as humans are producers. We produce things, we create things, not so much consume them. But this idea of, I want to get wealthy, then people automatically assume so I can consume more. Because that's the story that's been put in our head, what wealth is all about. But when you get wealthy, you can create even more. And when you're creating and you're impacting other people's lives, which I believe is what we're here for, then you start to shift how the whole mother earth is spinning around and turning and you know the amazon rainforests and all these things that are happening in our world that you then you have a voice unfortunately i mean i worked in the pentagon i've worked in different government programs and if you're making 80 100 hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred fifty thousand, they don't care about you you're making millions, then you have a voice, then you're making an impact. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, I don't want to even say it's a sad truth. It's just the truth because mm-hmm. money is a tool. Like when you eat, you need a tool. You need you use chopsticks yeah. or a fork. So if you want to make that impact, you need money. It's just the tool that you need to to achieve that goal that you have. And you talked about it's not about consuming; it's about impacting other lives. And I cannot. Again, this is another cliche that people think, oh, I want to impact other people's lives, but it's so true. And we started this episode with that. And you were saying, I was hoping if my (laughs) app only changes one person's life, the rewarding feeling that you get when you receive Mm -hmm. the the review or the testimony or, or the story of how you actually help somebody is just so worth it. And I totally agree with you in, in yeah. every step of the way. So we have money here because you want to, you want to help you, you want to achieve the goals that you have for your, for your future self. But then you also, the rewarding feeling that you get, it's like they go back hand in hand. It's not like, Oh, okay. Why don't you just get the rewarding feeling and not the money they go together? Right. They go hand hand. Right. Because you can escalate it. You can grow it even more. I mean, why, what and it's not for everybody some people are happy with where they're at and i'm not going to say everybody needs to be out being an entrepreneur you like you can make impact where you're at right now uh the idea that um i want to help people get away from is one they're not enough that they don't have enough and that they need to attain something first before they can start giving so the top three industries in the United States are all based on us believing that we aren't enough and that we have to fear and that there's lack and scarcity. And the number one being arms. So I worked for 3.5 Pentagon, $3.5 billion Pentagon program, which was just a sliver of the overall program. And that's of the overall Pentagon budget. Sorry. And that's, you know, that's, that's money that goes towards the human species being afraid of each other. <laughs> because I don't want to even go down that because I'm going to get super emotional over this because that is a big trigger point for me. Yeah, I don't want to go there either. I don't, but we all know, we all know, right? Yeah. And yeah. like the shootings in America and all that, you know, like we're all scared of each other. Okay, then the next industry is pharmaceuticals. and eight of the 10 top prescribed drugs are for stress-related illnesses. These are preventable illnesses. These are illnesses because people are increasing their debt to get more stuff. We are learning how to create debt, not wealth. As soon as we get through school, we, well, we're first off learning that we're not good enough because we're in this comparison system called the education system. And if I didn't get an A, then I'm not going to be anything when I grow up. Or if I did get an A, well, I better be a superstar at whatever I do. So like whatever happens, you're setting yourself up for failure in school. And so we, we go through this and then we get all this stress in our lives because we stop believing in what we're capable of doing because we're in this comparison system. We start putting our value into a resume and that's what it, we, the only thing we learn how to market is ourselves, our skill sets for somebody else to buy us at a certain, like whatever's on that resume and not by the true value system, which I think is not just the impact, like you and I can see visually the impact we make in each other's lives because we talk, we interact, but then there's the impact that when you walk away from this conversation that you'll have with your daughter or with your employees or your husband or your neighbor and because of this conversation and in fact it's scientifically proven that just opening up the door and smiling at somebody has an impact five levels deep and when you think about that impact that you're making that's where your worth is at is not whether you can get an a on a test whether you got a degree from a top university whether you're making you know a certain dollar amount it's what level of impact are you making and on the the world around you and to oh in the third industry is alcohol and tobacco so 
Tobacco if you've had a still? Yeah. 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 With the vaping and everything. Yeah. Vaping. I mean, and now marijuana was yeah. <laughs> it's gonna yeah. get into it. Although yeah. this morning it came out that Wall Street was overestimating the amount of marijuana people wanted to 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 uh consume because it didn't yeah. actually pan out as much as well as they, they had estimated. But so tobacco, I, so that is basically another form of stress relief, right? That's right, right, right. You feel stressed, have a drink and smoke. Yeah. So all of these are based on, you know, not enough, stress, yeah. lack. And they're, they're man-made products, right? They're, they're created. So when we're born, you look at your kids, they're not scared of the neighbor. They're not scared of somebody else. They yeah, don't feel like they have to take innocent. the edge off at the end of the day. You, know? yeah, you see the best in people until... Right. You're brainwashed with that. And I couldn't mm -hmm. agree more. I was actually talking to Mark Moss, who's also in our program, uh, the other day, and he didn't even go to college. And we were talking about how he now, he self-educates himself on every single topic, mm -hmm. but he doesn't take the exam because why does he need to take the exam? Well, he's going to actually go and implement what he learned, yeah. which is absolutely true. I spent six years studying something that I never use in my job, mm -hmm. but, and yet I, I keep on educating myself and it's no ranking. Like I don't go and say, Hey, I learned English. Like yeah, English is my third language through friends, give me an A. Like nobody knows that. Like I don't have a certificate of saying masters of English. English, yeah, right? yeah, but right. I use it and I use it to, to talk to you, right? And it's just, it's, um, uh, anyways, the education topic is a different topic than, I, I don't want to get into that today. But so let's go back. All right. So we talked about your story on how you really pulled yourself up from, things going really, really wrong, wrong in your life to, to the point of your dad passing away, which is, I'm so sorry to hear that. I know how tough that can be, um, to finding the power of gratitude and yeah. changing your life upside down. We talked about why it is important to actually be successful and why is it, it is important to make money through whatever means it is. Mm -hmm. Is it entrepreneurship? Is it investing, which is something that I focus on as a cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're talking about uh, the culture of Americans and the Western society, which is basically consuming, 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 and not being there. So once it, one thing that, again, in The Secret was very profound to me was another version of what you just said, which is you, we think that in order to get happy, we have to get here. Whereas mm -hmm. you first have to be happy mm -hmm. in order to get that as reverse. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, what happens when you practice gratitude? So first off, the reason you want to do it daily is because you're getting information at you daily from like these top industries. There's tributaries to them, like the news, right? It's social media, look, Twitter, social media, Facebook. right? Mm -hmm. You look at the news and the commercials are for all these prescription drugs. So they're all supporting each other. And because of that, because it's coming in at so many different dir directions, having power rituals, as I call them, um, some people call them just sacred rituals, whatever, routines, habits, having these healthy habits in place is like protecting your brain, protecting your emotions, protecting your well-being. And it goes down to just your health. Like without your health, you have nothing. And, and so with gratitude, what happens even on a scientific level is that when you practice gratitude, when you sit down and write down what happened each day that was good, then your brain doesn't know whether it's happening right now or if it happened in the past. So for example, I went to this museum on the border of Mexico where they had this very realistic um, exhibit about how immigrants came into the country illegally. And you took off your shoes, you stood in some sand, you put on this headset, virtual reality headset, and you're like an immigrant trying to get through this um, border patrol passing. And at one point, a, a gun just comes right up to your head and you hear the click. And right then I was, my, my heart God, was, yeah, oh, and yeah. I fell to the ground. I was scared. 
it was fake but my body did not know it. My brain did not know it. It reacted as if it's real. And it can do that for the positive as well. So when you take this event and you say, hey, that worked out really well for me, that was a good event. And it could be something as small as listening to my kids play together or finding a parking spot or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be monumental. But when, it, when you reinforce that every day, what you're doing is building a highway. So in your brain, and what I like to liken it to, I grew up on a farm, so my dad would drive this tractor from the feed lot out into the feed, out to the field where the cattle were, and he'd drive it so much to the point where he wouldn't even have to steer the steering wheel. There'd be ruts in the ground, in the gravel, to where the tractor was, so he'd just let go of the hands and it'd go automatically, yeah. and that's what happens to your brain. So when you're in a stressful situation, you automatically go towards a more optimistic thought because we cannot be grateful or optimistic and, and anxious at the same time. Our brains don't have that dual processor. So you can interrupt anxiety by just finding something good in that moment. Something right. Funny. And I, one, one thing that you just said, and I want to stress that for people who are watching today, is that it doesn't have to be monumental. It can be something as small mm -hmm. as, you know, oh, I have water and the water really, yeah. it can be very, very small. And I actually was thirsty. <laughs> yeah. I'm very grateful for having this water on my desk. So when I was thirsty, I was able to sip it. And you know what? I well, am going to write that down on the grid because sometimes you don't have that much to write down, especially mm -hmm. at the beginning. And you're like, okay, what do I write? You can write about, oh, I can breathe. There are so many yeah. people who are, I can, I can see if you can see. I can hear if you can hear. Whatever yeah. it is, anything even small that you can find, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be monumental. I think it's super important yeah. when it comes to the power of gratitude and, and just building it, as you said, over and over again, so that you are even able to see things that you weren't able to appreciate before and be grateful yeah. for them. Because yes. uh, I know that your app sends you a reminder, it sends me a reminder once a day at nine, but I write in a probably like seven to 10, time, 10 times per day, because the first one is always the hardest, but then, you know, it just comes, it opens yeah. my eyes. I want to keep on writing. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, this was cool too. Oh, that happened. Oh, this happened. And uh, I also love the fact that I can take pictures and upload it on it. As well. I know I'm just like promoting the app. It's just it's so <laughs> cool. It's like one of my, one of my things right now. I'm, I'm on that one uh, more than I'm on social media right now. So <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah. So Carla, um, I just wanted to, again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to be with us and like enlighten us about your story. It's so powerful and thank you so much for your app i am going to send a link i'm gonna add a link to your app actually um down below in the description but if you go if you want to just go in it's called the gratitude app and it has a picture of a monk <laughs> yeah so you can go to the gratitude and yeah it'll take you right to the download I also wanted to ask you about one more thing before i let you go and that is uh your podcast radical show and I love it how you've dropped the F and you add it on again. It's just like the best stuff ever. <laughs> <laughs> she almost said it. <laughs> I almost said it. This YouTube kids might be watching. So <laughs> I love it. So can you tell us a little bit about your podcast as well? And where can people find you besides yeah. the app and your podcast? Yeah. So the podcast is all about making these shifts in your life just through little practices like a gratitude practice or just your story or other little things that have the power of your mind. So it's a interesting mashup of uh, ancient wisdom with neuropsychology and just everyday life. So, um, and the reason I dropped that F or it's in there like that is because that's to indicate failure, how failure is so important to creating these shifts, but yet we're told Failure is a bad thing, but it isn't. That's genius. I love it. Like when I first saw it, like, oh, this is the best logo I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of compliments. I love it. It's like, oh, why didn't I come up with that? I want that. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I have that for you too. <laughs> <laughs> and one last thing is that you are going to be on Funnel Hacking Live. You're going to actually be talking there. Uh, no. <laughs> Shoot, we're going to do what? 
What happened? I thought you were. <laughs> no. We gotta cut it this. <laughs> Time out. What happened? I thought, didn't Russell just give you a <laughs> shout out what happened? All right. <gasps> rewind, rewind. We talk about this later. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Were you just like kind of triggering Russell to have you on? Yes! <laughs> oh. I thought I told you. No. I thought because there was like, a lot of people were like, congratulations. Like, no, no, he was promoting um um what's his name? Oh, I, I don't Another know. Guy. I I wasn't interested in anybody else. I was like, that's oh, all I go. <laughs> that's literally oh my god. We need to like we need to section this out and just send it to him. No, I, I will, think I'm in the 2021 lineup. I'll, 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 this is true story. I still hadn't got my tickets yet. Once I saw that, I went and bought my ticket. <gasps> I'm going to have to tell Russell. I so here's I'm what's happening, to... though. It, the Russell's filming crew is coming to film me for two days. Okay. All right. So we're going to, so. yeah, we're going to add this. Dude, like Russell is missing out. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to edit this out. We're going to actually put this in YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's all real. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go back. We'll have to girl. tag we Russell too. You. So not funnel hacking live, but people can watch. <laughs> That's so, so, so funny because the same day, okay, now that we're on this topic, the same day that ever, like I did that, I posted that out there, Russell, get in touch with me. Um, I did get a phone call to talk at an event and it was at my hometown of a population of like less than 1500. <laughs> well still, let's talk. <laughs> Probably all of them will come, all of them should come. <laughs> yeah, so now it's gonna be, oh, you saw me at my event in Salem, South Dakota. <laughs> so yeah, uh, hardly fun on that live, but um, uh, no, he, the, his crew is coming out to film me, so they're going to do a story about me, which will be fun. Yeah, that should be awesome. All right, mm -hmm. well. <laughs> put that in there. Of course, we'll put that in there. So are you on Twitter? You, yeah, I, I yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Carla so, White. Yeah, so RadicalShiftPodcast.com, CarlaWhite.org, Carla with a C, and um, yeah, at Hey Carla White on Instagram. And Carla, so, social. Carla, for Carla, <laughs> we're going to end this here. But if there was one thing that you want our uh, audience just to take away, the one final thing, yeah. what would you tell them? Yeah. So we're getting close to the end of the year. Like I would highly recommend just finding a pocket of time, like a half an hour and dream big, like vision out 2020, like is twice as big, 10 times bigger than what you ever dreamed a year to be before. Now, most people will be like, oh, I don't want to get hurt if it doesn't come true. I want to be realistic. But the thing of it is, is that they have everything, whether it's scratching your toe or moving your hair, it has to start with a thought. Like you have to have that idea first. So whatever you want out of life, it has to start with an idea. And the more ideas you put out there, so don't just like 30 these are my 30 things I want or my 50 things on my bucket list, 5,000 things, 10,000 things. It's, there's nothing greedy about that. It's about opening and expanding your mind. Just like writing down gratitude. If you write a hundred things, you're going to notice a hundred more things. And so when you notice those things, you'll start to notice patterns. Things will happen. People come into your life. Your confidence put it out will there, increase. Put it out there and tell people mm -hmm. about those things too, right? So yeah. I, I've, I've noticed that whenever I tell people I'm starting something, more things come my way. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just putting, actually putting that thought out there is the first step to yeah. making it happen. Do you have a um, substitute for the word greed? Abundance. <laughs> yeah, because so, it's very easy to just like, in your thought, like you don't want to even have the, that word in your vocabulary, I feel like, because it just brings that negative mm -hmm. energy. Well, it's an ego thing. Greed yeah. is ego. Yeah. And that's saying that there's, there's lack, there's not enough. And there is. I mean, 
if we divided up all the money in the world, everybody would have well over a million bucks. But it's our belief in it, like five, 10 years down the road, we'd all have the same amount that we have now simply because of the story we tell ourselves about money and whether it's good or bad. So that's why like so many people come into money and they lose it, if not even more, shortly after that because they believe it's a bad thing. And they so get rid of it. Yeah. Subconsciously, yeah, they want to protect themselves. So um, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing what you're doing. No, thank you. This was just, I was, I was super excited for this. And yes, this is our new YouTube channel. So you may not get as many views, but Uh, we're going to promote. And I I think I just want to thank you so much for coming on and thank you for sharing. Thank you for everything that you do. And I really do hope you are going to be speaking <laughs> in much, 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 much bigger uh, crowds. Uh, well, at least now I get to see you at Funnel Hacking Live. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was just because of you. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. I'll let, I'll let Russell know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> thank okay, you. Okay, thank you so much. And people watching today, I really hope that you go and download that app and start writing gratitude today right now and just see how your life is going to be better thank you again so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and like and share with your friends and i'll see you again in the next episode of the investiva movement